This video is on Affinity Publisher and how to create a children's picture book. A high quality template for the cover and inside pages. It's in landscape mode and for children's books that you can use time and time again so you can create a landscape template or a preset and in this instance I'll just create the preset. You can export it yourself to a template when you're finished. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe now and never lose an idea again. Don't miss out on the next design video. If you're subscribed, it will pop up in your reminders when there's a new story. Now children's picture books enjoy a special place in publishing and they're always popular. If you're writing your own children's book, this tutorial will show you how to create a high quality template for the cover and inside pages and it'll share with you top tips for making your pages look stylish, legible and above all fun and engaging for little ones. You will need Affinity Publisher and you may need Affinity Designer or Photo. But you'll certainly need Affinity Publisher depending on what photos you use, whether you need the other ones. Now, what software will you need? Affinity Designer. It doesn't matter if you're going through a publishing house or not. Children's books all need to meet certain technical criteria before you can get your book on shop shelves. Now the three most popular industry standard sizes for children's books are portrait orientation, 10 by 8, landscape orientation, 8 by 10, and square, 8 by 8. The number of pages in a children's book is also subject to general rules. Most children's books are 32 pages in length, but some shorter books are 24. So there's two sizes in general, 32 and 24. Of course there are a thousand variations on this, but if you want to stick with the industry standards, you're more than likely to be accepted than not. So 24 or 32 pages. When you're storyboarding, stick to a maximum of 500 to 1,000 words. 500 words limit for very young and upwards to 1,000 for a slightly older audience. We're talking children's books here, not young people. Okay, let's get to it. Open up Affinity Publisher and go to File, New, My Presets and set up the document as follows. We're going to create the cover of your book first. So I'll have two files, cover and internals. Set the print and page number of pages to one. Deselect facing pages and set the width to 254 millimeters, 10 inches, and height to 203.2. In the preset page size window, name the new preset Children's Book Landscape Cover. With your preset selected, click on Create and your front page will be set up ready. This page will be the front cover for your children's books. It's always best to design your front cover on its own first before you create the full wraparound design. We can create a second expanded page for the full cover including the back and spine after we've designed the front cover. Next, add four new layers in the Layers panel. Paper, background, image and typography. Ignore the fact that you've got Master A there. Just ignore that. The system puts that in there on its own and we won't be using it in this instance. Now, lock the top three layers. One, two, three. It's just been scrolled off the edge there. But that's okay, you can see they're locked, that one, that one and that one, because the first one we're using is that one there. 
download a simple yellow paper texture image. There's a million of those out there, so there's no need for me to um, give you a link to those. You can find that easily. There's lots of free textures out there. Download a suitable size one to place in your image. Take the rectangle frame tool, which is that one there, and extend the frame top and bottom. Then file, place, and choose your paper texture image and drop it in there. Now I've made a slight error here. I've pulled that bar up there. It should be there. But we can fix that later. And I think I mentioned that again later on. Arrange the image in the frame so that it fills it completely. Then go to Effects, Opacity, and reduce the opacity to 35%. You can see it doesn't look like that. It's reduced the opacity. There we go. I've fixed the edges. It's taken it out to the edge of the paper, not the bleed, but to the edge. That's the inside edge of your page or the wraparound of the cover. There's your bleed line there. And you're familiar with those by now, I'm sure. Return to the Layers panel and lock the Paper Texture layer and unlock the Background layer. That one's now locked and that one's unlocked. Lots of arrows going everywhere here. Expand the Swatches panel in the Colors area and click on the Swatch Menu Stack. That's that little, like a hamburger there. Click Add Document Palette. Click on the Stack again and for number four, rename the swatch to Children's Book Landscape. You can see up there I've renamed it. Click on the stack again and add a global colour. Set the colour to CMYK and the values to 0, 23, 78 and 0. Name the colour Mustard and add it to your swatches panel. And you can see there where we've created the swatch mustard colored swatch if that seems complex that's all right just pause the video here and work with your publisher until you figure out how to do that if you can create your own set of swatches it will save you a lot of time later on set the background color take the rectangle tool and drag onto the page to create a shape the same size as the frame sitting on the layer below the color should still be mustard but if not set the color fill to mustard that's that color you just created so you've got a background sitting over the paper texture with the shape still selected go to layers opacity and set the mode to multiply so you've just created that mustardy color set the mode to multiply you can see it there. There's your background and there's the rectangle and the mode is set to multiply. Next, we take a bit of a step outside. Download this cute illustration of a lizard. Open up the EPS file in Affinity Designer. That's the complete link. But I'll also put that in the descriptions, in the description that goes under this on YouTube. Remove the background of the image and the lettering beneath the blade of grass. So the white background has to go and the lettering has to go. And you can see there, I've removed the white background. And in this case, the white background is the very last layer in the group. So you just uncheck it because you don't want to delete it. This is going to destroy your photo, your image. If you Just unselect it and the background is gone. The same with the text. You go up to the text in the top edge of the layer and just unselect the, the curved layers and your text is gone. Then you go to Document Setup for that one and set the background to Transparent. 
was the reason for this because when you export it it will have a transparent background so EPS for export nothing to be rasterized whole document and just export it to a safe place where you want to put it now lock the image layer and unlock the top layer typography although we've gone I'll jump ahead a little bit there create a new frame using the picture frame tool here at the bottom right of the page file place choose your new EPS file and open it arrange the image nicely in the frame lock the image layer and unlock the top layer typography there we go now we're back on order slight typographical error there now there's a lot of text on this page probably more than I should have it's a bit of um, background on the Hitchcock font it's a free download and you can go to the to the link that I give you in the description or you can use any font you like really but um, it's an interesting font take the type tool and drag onto the page to create a small text frame type in the word the setting the font to Hitchcock size 50 points and the font color paper white you can see there we've got Hitchcock 50 points regular font and paper white copy and paste the word the set it below the word the change the word to very and set that one to paper white as well do it again change the font to red now you can set the red you can put the red color in your swatches panel and it's there for later because you're going to use this again in the next document copy and paste the word very place it below change it to clever do the same again set the font to green and type the word lizard so you end up with the very very clever lizard create another new swatch those are your CMYK colors and name it Jade and it's put in there oops and we've done it again never mind I've got that up there twice doesn't hurt to um, <laughs> doesn't hurt to emphasize it create a new text frame and position it in the bottom right corner of the page that's for that one there type in written by and the author name and set the font to Hitchcock size 18 point set the top line to a line left and the second line to a line right pull out the author's name in the Jade swatch so you make your author's name the Jade swatch color which will probably be that one there which I haven't got emphasized now that you've completed your front cover design you're ready to expand the cover into a full wraparound design complete with back cover and spine so now it gets a little more complex never fear go to the pages panel up there and duplicate page one this will create an exact duplicate of your whole page not master pages mind you pages now scroll down to page 2 of your document that's the one you just created before you expand the cover you'll need to work out the width of the book's spine now there's things going on here that you can look up and put aside for future reference but what we're doing here is a 32 page book on 130 GSM coated paper and this results in a 2.8 millimeter spine 
but we'll also need to add an extra 3mm to that to accommodate for a hardback cover. So we're looking at a hardback children's book here. Now that's a total spine width of 5.8. So to expand our cover we'll need to use this equation. Page width plus page width plus spine width equals total cover. So that's going to be 254 by 254 plus 5.8 equals 513.8mm. OK. Let's, let's set that up on the Affinity Publisher document. Click your mouse onto page 2 to make sure it's selected. In the Spread Setup panel, type in 513.8mm into the Width text box. Click to open the lock next to it. That's fairly important. Make sure you unlock that lock. If it's locked and you adjust that, dimension there, that dimension there will automatically readjust. And if you've forgotten and it does that, go back, flick the lock, put 513.8 and 203.2 in there. That'll set it back to what it's supposed to be. Now looking at this, we're going to select all of the layers, but we need to unlock them first. So unlock all the layers and holding the shift key Shift everything over until it meets the right hand edge of the bleed. Move the elements on the front cover over to the right side and lock all the layers again. So you unlock all that so you can move it. Select them all, unlock them and then holding the shift key down so you grab them all, move it over so it's over against the bleed. Now then, to mark out where the spine and back cover should sit, pull out a guide from the left hand ruler. You may need to go to view and show guides first and that will show you where your guides go. You'll notice I've got the margin over there um, out of the way so I can see it. So I can see the guides. Now pull the first one out to 254 and then pull a second guide. You put your cursor there, hold the shift key down and drag out to there. And the little, the marker, the distance marker will show on the edge of the guide as you're doing that. And pull it out to 256.9 to mark out the central point of the spine. Now here's where I correct the front page width again. Clicking it to select it, drag it out to the edge there. So that's to the edge of the canvas. Not the bleed, but out to that edge there. Because there's no bleed line there. That's the, that's the, uh, the spine of the book, if you like. So you don't need a bleed line there. It's never going to be cut off. Just the paper texture and background on both page 1 and page 2 pages. That's page 1 and page 2. If you had it incorrectly up there, as I did. I've moved it on both pages. Now we're ready to add artwork to the spine and back cover. Now you can jump ahead and just do the inside pages if you like, if you don't want to worry about putting the artwork. But putting the artwork on is a good exercise in doing this. This is why I've included it. Now this image is not copyright, it's available from a link that you will be provided with. I think it costs about $3 US uh, for the image, or you can use any image you like. Now return to the Layers panel and lock the top two layers. Unlock the Paper Texture and Background layers. Select both layers and copy and paste. They'll just paste them over here, but then move the pasted elements over to the left side of the page. And you can see I've got the bounding boxes around there. And they come out to the edge there and the edge there. And that's just what you want. Not those two, just those two. Paste the selection again, which will, which will give you another completely pasted copy there. But get hold of it and reduce its width 
to 5.8 millimeters, which is the width of the spine. Then drag it so you're placing it over the spine. And you can see your guide marks there so you know it's placed exactly right. And there's the width showing down there. If you, if you find yourself a little bit baffled as to where you should be with these things, just remember to keep checking down here. There's your width and your height and your X and Y um, positions. Okay, we need to add a couple more CMYK swatches, colour swatches. We're going to add them in there. So go back to your swatches. Um, go to there and add another global colour. Set it to CMYK values I've got there and give it a name, pink. Do the same again and give it a name called lime. Remember to add swatches. Go to there and add a global colour. There you see, and it'll, that will come up. You type in your swatch values there. Click in there. Click add. You've got your name pink there and add. And it will add the colours in there. Very easy. It's also very easy to forget to name your colours. Now, select just the top coloured rectangle on the left hand side of the page. That's that rectangle there. And select the fill colour of lime. It will change from whatever it was before, that colour, to lime. Now go to the spine and change its fill colour to pink, as we see there. So you've got green, pink and, well, a mustardy colour. Add your finishing touches. You need a barcode on the bottom left corner using the rectangle frame tool. Now most barcodes have an exact size where the barcode goes. Um, one of the places you can find this, and I haven't gone into it here because this tutorial is already far too long for you. Um, go to KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. Um, sign in there for free if you're not already registered. And you can find out all sorts of things like what size a barcode is. And there's many other places too. Now, we've got a spine cover there and the rotated text along the spine using the central guide as an aid for aligning it just right. Set the text to Hitchcock and the size to 11 point. And you can see you've got the name in there, the very, very clever lizard and written by Billy Joe. Exactly the same text as there. Are you worried about how you get that in there? Just do the right size box there, type the text in and use the handle to position it there and use that there to rotate it exactly so it's exactly vertical. Your art, your cover artwork is finished. Great work. And that's all that's left for you to do is export the cover as a print ready file ready for sending off to your chosen printer. And of course you won't have that cover book but you'll have your own ideas and that gives you an idea of how it's done. Okay, you head up to file and export, choose PDF for print from the format drop down menu, collect, select current page, make sure you have page 2 selected and click export. According to your printing house you may need to select more and add other settings. And we'll go to that later at the end of the other one. Now we're going to set up the inside pages of your book. This doesn't take anywhere near so long, but it's still reasonably complex. Now you need to set that up as a separate document. So close your existing cover file. But what I would suggest you do, because you can have these in tabs, Leave the cover file open. It makes it easier in a moment and I'll show you how. So we'll start by creating the template for the pages in Affinity Publish in a new file. So go to File, New and... Oops, there we go. Lovely little animation. Don't forget to subscribe now. Never lose an idea again.
Now, as we were saying, go to File, New, My Presets. Children's Book Landscape Inner. Now, what I did here was set the document's size that I wanted up here. Default Master. Facing Pages now, because we've got more than one or two pages on here. Horizontal. We're starting on the right. 20 millimeter margins. Now the bleed, the inner bleed is zero. So that's the left hand bleed and the right hand on the left page. Left hand on the right page, right hand on the left page. And all others are five. Because the inside edge of the page is where you'll be in the fold and you don't need to worry about a bleed there. Create your new preset by clicking the plus sign. Rename your preset over there and you can now see I've got the landscape cover and the landscape inner. Then click on create to create the new document. And we're away. This will be your 32 page template for the inside pages. Note that there's a zero bleed line there. Page 1 through to 32 down there. Take the text frame tool and drag a rectangle onto a corner of the left hand page. Now this is on the master page. You can see this, master A, we're not on page 1, we're on master page, master A. Type page and set the font to Hitchcock regular 12 point. It's in a text frame right there. And you can see the width and the height. So I've got 30 millimeter width and 6 millimeters in height. It's X and Y position are 20, 20, right in there. So that's on the edge of the page. Set your type cursor in the frame. And then go to Text, Insert, Fields, Page Number. Text, Insert, Fields, Page Number. That's with your cursor sitting in... You type page and left your cursor sitting there. The hash sign, that's the marker for the page number, will appear after the word page. And you can see that here quite clearly before we go on. Page, hash number. Now, duplicate master A to master B. That's master A. That's master B. We've duplicated it by using duplicate master page. Copy the left side page number rectangle and position it onto the right hand side of the page. Check the box, the X and the Y, and right align the text. So that text is right aligned and that text is left aligned. Now, back to editing the pages. You've got the master pages set up with page numbers, but there's no page on page one. That's because we didn't put it there. Expand the typography layer and right click on it and select copy. Make sure all the text layers are selected. Typography, make sure they're all selected. Now move your new document Move to your new document in the other tab. Now we need to click on page one, double click on it to select it so it comes up there and add a new blank layer. That's what I did there because it didn't have any layers in it. And right click on that layer and select paste. Now you can't see the other text there because it's white text on a white background. That's okay, it is definitely there and if you select any of those layers it will show the text bounding box. What I also did was pull out a guide from there to the center point of the page to help align the text centrally. The text, of course, is in Hitchcock, similar colours and fonts to the cover. 
There's the centre line I've pulled out. You can go back to the cover document. You can export your swatches you created in that document. Come back to your pages document. You can see there, there's your cover document in that tab. Here's the, the internal document we're working on, the interior, in this tab. So export your swatches from that one to a suitable place on your drive. Go back to this and import your swatches. So you're having to make them all again. Come back to your new document, import the swatch palette you just saved. Select each text layer as needed and apply the palette color as shown. See that one there has been selected. That's clever. And I've just applied that color there. Pulled out a guide to the centre point, as I mentioned. Now the text is on the cover in Hitchcock. Very nice. And text, I've aligned the text into the centre of there. I've left that text there and just aligned that. You can leave it offset if you like, or you can line it up. That's entirely up to you. That's page one, but there's no page number up here, you see, because as of yet I haven't applied... Master B to it, and I won't. This is Master A by default applied to this page, and it's only the left hand side of the page that has a page number on it, so it doesn't show on here. You don't want a page number on the cover after all. Now then, select all of the other pages, so they're all selected, and apply Master B. You know how to do that. Right click on that page and apply Master and select Master B. Now you can see you've got page 2, page 3, page 4, page 5. You can adjust those, of course, to how you like, and you can, you can even start that on page 1 if you want to start numbering from page 1. I didn't do that here because I'm showing how to set up the document rather than get into how to do page numbering and things like that. That's in another video. Now then, Scroll down to page 2 and 3, the first spread of your book. This is where you want to introduce your story and main characters. So you can see there's the cover page there, the front page, page 1 if you like. Created a text box there, text box there. We've created a background rectangle. Create, set it as mustard coloured, then put the text box on top and set that as a red. Create a text frame, left of page 2, set the text in a highly legible clear font, and I used Quicksand, which I've used here, and mentioned in the video I've done on the 12 best fonts to use for children's books, and I selected Quicksand. You can see it's clear and very easy to read. Perfect for children's books. Set your text characteristics to those shown in the clip. The font size is 52 quicksand regular. 61.2 points leading. Nothing special there. 51 it probably should be 52, but it's regular and red. There we go. Go back to the cover document and select the lizard image and right click copy. Come back to the, that's the cover document. Come back to the interior document on page 3 in the layers. Paste the image and move it roughly into the same position as it sits on in the front cover. So this is page 2 and 3, right? Page 2 and page 3. And there you have the lizard sitting on the yellow background. Now you can add depth to transparent background graphics and allow them to stand out against block colours. You can add a drop shadow, which doesn't really show up in here because it's got an orange background anyway. But you can set that. Select the lizard image. Go to Effects, Outer Shadow, adjust the colour of the shadow to a more suitable orange shade and reduce the opacity to 25%. Set the offset to 6mm and the radius to 2. 
you can you can toy around with that if you like and get yourself a, an, Im, a, an outline image on there. Entirely up to you. Add a new swatch. CMYK settings and call it Midnight Blue. Remember colours, swatches and Midnight Blue. And believe it or not, it is. Copy the background and text from page 2 and 3. Scroll down to pages 4 and 5 and paste it into place. Yeah, I know, it's the same text. But we're going to change it. Adjust the colour of that background to Midnight Blue. So select on your swatch, select Midnight Blue and change the colour of the text to create more contrast. And there's your text. He could change the colour of his skin to match his surroundings. Head back to your Lizard Illustration in Affinity Designer. Hide all but the eye, nose and mouth and export this as a new EPS illustration. See everything's hidden except the eye, the nose and the mouth. Head back to your Affinity Publisher document. Create a picture frame to contain the image and file place this onto page 4 of your inside pages document and you can see it's placed in there well you can sort of see it the lizards change their skin to match his surroundings now it's up to you to fill the rest of your 32 pages once you've finished your inside pages you're ready to export these pages to a print ready file You can go to it and choose Adobe PDF print for format. Well, it's Adobe anyway. PDF is Adobe, isn't it? Let's face it. And click export. Make sure the document is set to export as pages, not spreads. That's important. Make sure to include all printer's marks and use document bleed settings found under the More tab. And under the More tab, you'll find them there. Include crop marks, include printer marks, and so on. They're the ones you need. You don't need the other ones as far as I know. When you're satisfied, press Close and then Export. Now we've covered a wide range of essential skills for tackling book design projects in this tutorial. You can now do all of the following. Industry, size, industry sized templates for covers and inside pages of children's books, design front covers that are stylish, and apply topography graphics and color to your templates to make a fun, on trend design. Thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe to my channel.